Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Promoting Safety Engineering. And what we generally talk about is safety engineering, process engineering, and um, yeah, just share information about different software, um, process, flow, diagrams, just general stuff about engineering. And if you like what you hear, please do subscribe to my channel. And um, so today I want to explain the relationship between process flow diagrams, block flow diagrams, PNIDs, and HMBs. So um, so it just um, shows the difference between them is just, should I say, more level of detail. Um, first, and um, the first in the line, which is the high level view of um, the, uh, the process, um, is called a block flow diagram and it's just boxes that's exactly what's on the screen just boxes telling you this goes into this place this goes into this place and this goes out so it just shows the relationship between the systems or the um, equip or the equipments the major equipments in the system it just shows the relationship and how the flow goes across um, the next is and that is called a uh, BFD, a block flow diagram. The next in the line is called a PFD. That's a process flow diagram. Now, I'll give a little recap of everything and then go into further details. So the next is a process flow diagram. Now, the process flow diagram breaks into more detail what's happening in the entire process. It shows you each of the major equipments and the general direction of flow. So it breaks it down like um, a pump. This is the pumping section. This is a vessel. This is the next pumping section and like that. So you have an idea like a bird's eye view of everything that's happening. It gives a little more detail on top uh, so it explains what each um, equipment is doing gives you a little bit about the the physical parameters the flow the pressure so this for this pump now that is 5302 AB that's this so you have a little info on this tank here's the information or and so they're just a little information on everything this tank here more info so it's just a little information about what's exactly going on in the entire process and you can just see everything in a picture or at a glance you can have everything at a glance then goes further into PNIDs now PNIDs are a lot more in detail so this is like the almost like the final stage you want to get your drawing to where this kind of pump here which looked like this in your pfd this is it all oh, you scan the pfd it says p5302 ab and this is p5302 a and b and you have all the instrumentation on top all the everything information about the pipe all the valves around so it gets into more detail here and then finally uh this is not a drawing but it gives you even more detail about uh, it's called the heat and material balance. It tells you it's highly related with the PFD. So in the PFD, when you're going th um, from an equipment to another equipment, the flow, the stream of um, liquid or gas, that, the fluid that goes across from an equipment to the next, it generally has a number. And that number, you can pick it up in the heat and material balance which now shows exactly what's inside that stream so for this now you have uh you have uh stream one stream two stream three up to stream 12 now there could be as many streams like now as as you can as large as the processes so this is uh stream one that's coming from the surge the um, condensate surge vessel and then after the pump it goes into stream two and after the tank it goes into stream three then the pump the next pump then it goes to stream four and then this is stream 11 so there are streams all over the place which kind of matches with your heat and material balance so it lets it tells you exactly the temperature the pressure the molar flow mass flow it gives you the um how much methane ethane propane everything that has to do with the stream uh, the properties, physical, chemical properties, everything. It gives you a breakdown of everything. So this is very, very necessary for process engineers and also in process safety because 
when you um it's time to model your consequence analysis and um like you want to do some fast um some calculations on DMV fast or shell shepherd shell fred you need to have an idea of the fluid of what's inside the the stream and you put those into your software to help you generate your how um serious your explosions would be or if there's a jet fire or a jet fire a flash fire if you have a blivy you want to know kind of know how serious it's going to be and you use those software to tell you so you have to use the software working with the process flow diagrams because that tells you what's inside each equipment which you model in your software now going back into so i want to now exp break it further down so we've had a little look at the block flow diagram which i assume m most of you would already like have an idea about so this is a reactor and the flow of toluene hydrogen goes into the reactor effluent comes out toluene recycle into the gas separator and see that's easy very easy to understand but when you understand this it helps you further you can break it down into this this is not the same process but it's uh, it's the same logic so this you have flow coming from a condensate surge vessel it goes into a condensate uh, disposal pump which pumps into your um, tank which should be a condensate storage tank which now when um, you want it discharged or you want to evacuate some of the condensate you have your pump here which is uh, p5301 ab that's constant condensate export pump so it's used for exporting into v5301 which is the condensate storage day tank and then uh, it goes into the condensate loading pumps and then it's discharged to either vessel or it's evacuated from the facility so this is the flow and you can see it easily just from here to here to here to here to here that's where the these are the major equipments and that's the general idea <coughs> on direction of flow now to break it further down after you've understood this you can now use it to look at your PNIDs because this is very very essential this is what you're gonna actually be using for all your engineering work so you need to have an idea of the entire process you look at your PFDs and then for further breaking down because your PNIDs is going to take a major equipment and put them on a sheet so you have like uh, for a PFD of one or two pages you might have up to 20 30 PNIDs so it helps you understand like each major equipment will have a page and then so it helps you easily understand the flow when looking at the PNIDs because if you just get the PNIDs you have to be really experienced to actually understand the flow of the process so this is uh, v1101 and this is the condensate surge vessel and i'm going to be look, um, going back and forth with, between the pnids and the pfds so that you have a little idea of how it flows so this line comes from the condensate surge vessel and this is the condensate surge vessel here so this is the line they're talking about the line goes all the, you can see so much equipment um instrumentation shutdown valves and all that you don't get to see that on a uh, pfd it's just very little details and from the condensate storage vessel the flow goes to the next page which is the condensate disposal pumps now that's p5302 ab which is this here p5302 ab now you can hear actually there are two pumps but uh, but on the pfd it just says a and b and it just shows one pump so that shows definitely more detail you can uh, go back again you would see that prior to this there is a shutdown valve here at the fl um, f on the flow line on the discharge line here you can see that shutdown valve but it's this sh definitely shows a lot more detail with instrumentation so this is the pump and this are the sets of pumps here in the second page five yep so this is it so this mirrors or should i say this yeah it mirrors this but in a lot more detail and after that you go to the next page 
so after this pump 5302A and B, you go to the next page, which is the tank T5301, condensate storage tank. You go back here. This is your condensate storage tank T5301. You can see how little it is with little instrumentation, no information about all these valves around. So all I'm just trying to explain to you is that the PNID gives you a lot more detail. The process flow diagram is just to let you understand the flow. There's a lot more other lines going in out which you wouldn't see on a process flow diagram but it, the process flow diagram gives you a general understanding of where you're going and where you're at so this is t5301 condensate storage tank and this is it here it takes the entire page then you go to the next page which is p53 that's page 7 p5301 a and b which is this p5301 a and b and these are the condensate export pumps so this is it here condensate export pumps b5301 a and b here it just shows a but when you go in here you see a and b so um they could either be on hot standby or cold standby which means um one is uh, the line is already uh, the pumps are lined up to start work automatically if one fails uh also the operating philosophy i couldn't be too sure of that it could be um two by hundred or two by fifty there might which means two by hundred means um only one works and the other one is on standby two by fifty means both of them work and they are always constantly running you could have three by fifty which means two would work and one is on standby in case one fails and so so the the hot standby cold standby cold standby means someone has to actually go there and set it up in case one fails whereas a hot standby means it's lined up to work and will automatically pick up or just someone pushing a button in the control room it will start work um they the standby will get to work so that's the pumps the export pumps and the export pumps on the pfds goes straight to the v5301 which is condensate storage day tank that's this vessel now look at how the vessel is here Con this is what it looks like here but then when you come to page 8 v5301 that's condensate storage day tank you can see so much information uh, valves uh, pressure control valves closed valves locked valves uh pressure relief valves everything flow flow transmitter the drain line you come back to your pfd and there's just really really little to no detail there so um after this so it's always good to have your pfds along with your pnids especially if you're going to handle a hazard so you have an idea of the flow and you don't miss anything out and you can obviously although you should be able to do this if you're handling the hazard well you'll be able to um arrange your pnids and have a general idea of the flow way um of the direction in which you're going so this is yep so now this we've after this tank uh storage condensate storage day tank we now have the condensate loading pumps which are here and the next on the pnids shows condensate loading pumps package so there are four of them here one two three four and they're all onto loading arms so the loading arms of course into trucks into vessels and it evacuates the condensate from the facility so these are the condensate export pumps uh yep so this is it um one p zero zero four a b c here same here one p one p zero zero four a b c okay sorry i made a mistake there are actually three pumps one two three so that's a b and c and i think the operating philosophy it's not written here but i believe it should be two by fifty maybe three by 33 i don't know but yep so that should be it uh it's written somewhere here yep so pumps operation is three by 50 meaning two would be operating constantly and one would be on standby so the one on standby in case one of the two operating fails that would pick up and uh yeah you'd have you wouldn't have any uh re reduction in your flow so yep so uh that's that's it all in all uh, i've broken down i let me have a quick 
give you a quick recap. Uh, I started with block flow diagrams, which just gives you a general idea of what's happening. And then you go into more detail in process flow diagrams of process flow schemes. PFSs and this shows a lot more detail and you have a general idea of what the flow is like from equipment to equipment and um, block flow diagrams are more of like systems whereas um, process flow diagrams are more of like major equipment and then you go into your PNIDs which gives all the detail and this is what you actually need to be reading this is actually the meat of process engineering so after here then uh, you have your heat and material balance this is not a drawing but it generally gives you an idea of what's happening in all the streams and it works hand in hand with the process flow diagram so thank you very much once again this is promoting safety engineering please do subscribe to my channel more information or vi more videos with lots of information <laughs> i would definitely be coming up thank you do have a lovely day bye bye